When using Excel formulas, do you find yourself adjusting the row selection to account for new values? How about when creating a drop-down list, whenever new values get added, are those showing up in your list? Well, there's one super easy solution 90% of Excel users don't know, which are dynamic arrays using the hash operator. So let me show you how it works. For this, we first need to understand dynamic arrays. So over here in this small data set, we have the grades for each of these students. Let's suppose that we want to give them a 10 point bonus. So for this, we need to do it specifically for the first cell. So it would be the grade plus 10 and hit enter. Then if we wanted to drag this down, we could double click over here, take it all the way to the bottom. But since Excel introduced dynamic arrays, there's a faster way to do this. It's simply by going to equals and instead of just selecting this one cell, we press Control shift down to select all of the cells and then just add 10 to that and you'll notice that it does all of them at once. This is what's known as spilling all of the results and you'll notice it's a dynamic array because it has this blue border around it and also the cell is grayed out as you can see all of these except the very first one where there's the actual formula. If you think about it, there's many functions that work with these dynamic arrays. For example, the unique function where suppose we want to find out all of the unique subjects that we teach, we would type equals unique, hit the tab key there and select all of the subjects. Now you'll notice we get the same blue border and the grayed out formula except in the first cell. Now why am I teaching you about these dynamic arrays? Well, that's because the hash operator works specifically with dynamic arrays. Over here to the side, let's suppose we want to find out the count of the subject. So how many subjects are we teaching? For that, we could use the equals counter function. And all we need to do is select the first value and then just add the hash sign. You'll notice as soon as you do that, it, it selects the entire range. Hit enter there because the hash operator is dynamic if we added a new subject let's suppose we call this spanish down over here now you'll notice we have an updated count of seven and the unique function is also dynamic so that's all looking correct that said if we did it differently without the hash operator but just using a counter function and let's say i went from g3 and i typed it all the way to g9 in this case close those parentheses and hit enter now, if we add a further one, so let's say alongside French, we go for German. Now you'll notice that this one updates because of the hash, but this bottom one doesn't because we typed it manually. Luckily, unless we type the selection range ourselves, the hash sign is going to show up automatically. So we can do counter again, and this time if we select the whole range just manually like so, as soon as we go to that very last value, you notice it switches to a hash. Whereas if we go one back, it's still G9. As soon as I go to the last one, it switches again to the hash. So it's gonna be fully dynamic per C. That's the case whenever you're using a dynamic array function like the unique. Before we look at some more realistic examples, if you want to learn more hacks like the hash sign, a great way to do that is using HubSpot's 50 Excel hacks guided template. By clicking the link in the description below, you can access this guide completely for free. The download includes all 50 hacks with instructions on how to use them and some sample data for you to actually practice. The hacks are split into three different types and the website even provides short demo videos for each one. Personally, I find this Excel template most useful to refresh my memory on all of the different hacks and practice them using their sample data provided. So I recommend you head over to the link in the description below to download this completely free 50 Excel hacks guided template from HubSpot to level up your Excel game. And thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Now let's take it up a level and go over some more realistic examples. And suppose we want to create a small dashboard that you can see over here where we can select the subject and based on that, we're going to see all of our students and some statistics about each one. For this, we can first select on this range and press Ctrl T to convert it into a table. Click on OK there, and from here, we first want to use the filter function, which is a dynamic array. So we'll type equals filter, hit the tab key there, and the array for us is the entire data, so all of this part from top to bottom, comma, 
and we want to include the subject area whenever it's equals to, so we selected the subject column whenever it's equals to math. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. The idea is now we can go from math to let's say English and everything is going to update for us dynamically. Now that we have this dynamic array, we can start finding all of this data using the hash sign. So the average grade is going to be the average function. Hit the tab key there and we'll just select the very first one, which is F11 within this whole data set. And now press the hash key, close a parenthesis and hit enter. So here we reference the name column, but somehow we've managed to get all the way to an average grade based on this part. And that's because it selected the whole area, but the only numerical values are the grades. If you had some other values in name or class that are numerical, they would affect the average grade. So it's not ideal, and I'm actually going to show you an alternative in just a second. First, let's calculate the min grade and the max grade. So we'll do the same thing, hit the hash sign, close the parenthesis and hit enter. And same with the maximum, so equals max. And again, we'll select this first one and press on the hash sign, close the parenthesis and hit enter. Because we've used this hash sign, everything should be dynamic. So if I change a subject here to math again, you'll notice this one gets updated on the bottom. And so does the max grade and the average that get affected because it was 99. Finally, for the student count, we could use the counter function, hit the tab key there. And again, we'll select this first one and use the hash sign hit enter there, but you'll notice we actually have a bit of a problem. We should really only have five rows, so five students here, but instead we get 15. That's because we've selected the entire area, as you can see there. We can't actually just select one part, like only one column. Let's say we only wanna select column H. You'll notice when we do that, it doesn't seem to be working correctly. So let's press Control Z, and what we can do instead is inside of this counter, we can use the index function such that it only really operates on one column. Let's say we only want to count for column number one, which is the name. So here the array is fine as is, comma, we don't want any rows, so we'll put a zero here, comma, and we only really want column number one. So we'll select a one here, close a parenthesis and hit enter. Now it's giving us a student count of five because it's only counting this first column. That said, it's still dynamic, so if I change another subject to math over here, you'll notice that the student count is now upgrading. So we could have done the same thing with the average grade, the min and the max, if we had numerical values in some other columns too. That's looking good, we can even change the subject to English, and you'll notice how all of the data changes. That said, it would be nice to create a data validation. For that, we first need to find all of the unique subjects. So here on the side, we could type equals unique, hit the tab key and select all of the subjects from this side and hit enter. So these are all of the unique ones that we want to reference in the list. So we'll go to the cell, which is G4, head over to data and click on this button, which is data validation. From here, we want to select a list and that list source, we can click inside this area and we could just select all of this area from top to bottom. The problem is if we add new data, it's not gonna work anymore. So instead, what we should do is go from J2 and then we're just gonna use the hash sign. Click on OK there. And now we can see here in the dropdown, we have all of these showing, but if we added a new subject, like let's say Spanish, hit enter there, you'll notice it gets added over here. Let's see if it's able to show on this data validation too. And you can see it's updating as well. That's because we use the hash sign. Without it, we would still be limited to these first six values as our dropdown. And if you don't want this to show, what you can do is either hide it by hiding the whole column, or you could also change the fill color to match the background like so. Seeing this video, you might have wondered, why don't we use tables instead of these dynamic arrays? Unfortunately, functions that use dynamic arrays don't work with tables. So functions like the unique, the filter, and some of these other ones don't work very well with tables. I'll show you in just a second. For example, in this area over here that we have as a table, let's suppose that I wanna add a new column that just has the grades. So I'm gonna select all of them like we did before and just add 10 to them. 
hit enter here and you'll notice we get this huge spill error. That's because Excel tables already have these dynamic arrays built in. So we can delete this part and all we need to do now is select the first one and add 10. As soon as we do that, you'll see that it's already built in and it shows all the answers at once. If we try to use a function instead, like for example the unique function, which is a dynamic array, and we selected the unique subjects, hit enter, we also get an error here. So as you've seen, let me delete this column over here. The way to go is to have a table, then convert it into a dynamic array, like with this filter function, and then you can use the hash sign to get dynamic insights. If you want to learn more awesome Excel hacks like this hash sign, check out this video where I teach you 10 different ones or take our Excel course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.